people of Florida are no strangers to hurricanes, but Hurricane Milton is setting off alarm bells across government and even among local meteorologists. NBC weatherman in Miami, John Morales, teared up while reporting on Milton. Let's watch. It's just an incredible, incredible, incredible hurricane. Uh, it has dropped It has dropped 50 millibars in 10 hours. Um, I apologize. This is just horrific. Um, winds, maximum sustained winds are 160 miles per hour. And um, it, uh, it is just uh, gaining strength in the Gulf of Mexico, where you can imagine uh, the winds, I mean, the seas are just so incredibly, incredibly hot. Morales reshared his reporting on X, writing, quote, I debated whether to share this. I did apologize on the air, but I invite you to read my introspection on the Atomic Bulletin of how extreme weather driven by global warming has changed me. Frankly, you should be shaken, too, and demand climate action now. Fox News meteorologist Noah Berggren wrote on X, quote, This is nothing short of astronomical. I am at a loss for words to meteorologically describe to you the, the storm's small eye and intensity. 897 millibars pressure with 180 mph max sustained winds and gusts 200 plus miles per hour. This is now the fourth strongest hurricane ever recorded by pressure on this side of the world. Meteorologists are getting caught in the eye of the storm, whether or not these storms are caused by climate change. Hmm. Well, and there is, you know, there is, to be fair, something of a debate about this, the extent to which um, uh, climate change is real. I certainly accept that it is happening and that we are contributing to it. Um, the relationship between climate change and extreme weather is up for some debate. And, and individual storms. You and know, individual storms. this particular thing, yeah. Yes, because you do, you know, you always have to reckon with and what they're going through in Florida right now and other places in the country is very frightening and people have died and it is scary and resources, it sounds like, are not being made available to them by the federal response has been catastrophic and that's all worthy of condemnation. Um, you know, at the same time, it's, all, it's important. I, I, I'm someone who tends to avoid or be skeptical of everything's always getting worse narratives um, because actually fewer people in general do in the U.S. at least it's absolutely true, die in extreme weather events over time because we actually have better infrastructure to, to pr protect people from the consequences. Now, it, it is true that it'd be better if we have more renewable energy resources and we do more to protect the climate. I'm all for transitioning to those things in a time-appropriate manner, but you know we don't want to live in the Stone Ages again in order to do that because more people die that way when during the catastrophic weather events over human history that are were not caused by man-made climate change, but just happened anyway because that stuff happens and we had no way to defend ourselves because we didn't have the technological innovations that relied on these energy sources we've used. Yeah, I mean, I take the point that the capacity to have better protections and better ways of reacting to these events has improved. But to me, that is like, that's the band-aid, right? You're, you're then treating the problem after it has gone a long way down the tracks. Now, yes, you can debate, of course, whether this particular hurricane is caused by climate change or not. Hurricanes in and of themselves are not a new phenomenon. No. But it seems pretty clear that these extreme weather events are picking up in frequency. And as you say, the broad reality of climate change is something that is happening. And the pushback against that, often either just anti-science or driven on occasions by the fossil fuel industry, I think is wrong. Now, then you have, I think, a separate issue which does go to the sort of media question. I actually, those clips that we played, I think there was, you know, they became kind of instantly controversial. I kind of feel like we're at a time where it is only those emotional moments that sometimes break through. And I can understand frustration on the part of people who do know what they're talking about on this stuff if they just feel that it has never been listened to. Really. Sure. And sometimes uh, data points are, you know, cherry picked to scare mm -hmm. people. Like I saw a report about how the, the, um, the, the economic damage wrought by extreme weather in recent years. And they said, but actually, if you look over the time frame, it wasn't, it's not, it, it's actually, le it's lowering how much how, how many dollars it spends to fix these things because, again, the technology gets better. Or we hear about, I saw this statistic the other day, the number of people in recent years who died from extreme heat because of the rising temperature. But, of course, 
extreme cold kills more people than extreme heat. So you're, right. you're not considering right. the lives saved on the other end, which is not to say we should, you know, warm the entire globe or something, sure. because then the people most affected are, you know, in the southern hemisphere, the equator lying, let, which tend to be less developed nations. So I understand why those people might be, um, might be reeling. But, and then broadly, there's the, the larger problem of even if we get our emissions and everything in line, well, China's not doing that. You have the major, massive... Yeah giant polluters who have no problem being reckless in terms of the whole planet, we have to have some agreement with them or it's not, and what we do is not going to make much of a difference. I, I, I know and I, I, don't, I don't really disagree with that, but I think the, the, the danger is that it leads to a sort of inaction on our part, either individually or nationally. So it becomes this argument that people take refuge in, in a way, oh, well, like China's doing this, so it doesn't really matter what we do. It does matter what we do. These events are becoming worse. It is still a situation where the absolutely worst catastrophic outcome can still be avoided to some extent if things change. But if we just stay in this sort of framework of, oh, well, other countries will do whatever they do and it's all going to be a mess, then nothing happens and, and then you can be in very catastrophic situations, including parts of the United States that are going to become increasingly uninhabitable because of the sheer heat. Yeah, absolutely. And I think government should, especially to the extent they're, you know, preventing people from um, making more responsible decisions. Do you know how hard it is, for instance, to put a solar panel on your own property right. in, uh, at least in the District of Columbia? I imagine it's difficult other places. Because of the amount of regulation around Yes, yes, mm. because of the amount of regulation. It's ridiculous. They make yeah. you, you know, it's your own property. <laughs> you know, I yeah. think as a libertarian, you should be able to do uh, what you want with it. So the extent we can get government out of the way, um, I think that would be helpful. And then the, the bureaucracy that there people in these hurricane zones are dealing with in terms of trying to get um, supplies out. Now, now we're hearing lots of different things and it's hard to tell from our perches in Washington, D.C., what exactly is true, what is anecdotal. Um, but uh, but there, there's a lot of frustration with how uh, the last hurricane has been handled by FEMA, and which is nothing new. But uh, it, it sounds like FEMA... I, I, I have a hard time believing they have an absence of money to deal with this because they have a massive budget and we seem to find money for everything. Yeah. They're having staffing problems, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, I, 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 you yeah, say let, so. Let, let, let's just be careful about that, the whole thing about, like, oh, you've money for Lebanon and not uh, domestic disasters. Those are two separate funding streams. Well, but it's all government point. money. It is all government money, but, I mean, you can't just you go in and right. appropriate something that has been given for one purpose to another purpose. Also, I want to get back to your solar panels and getting government out of the way. Are your solar panels in some sense subsidized by government or not? Well, I don't want them subsidized, yeah. No, so I, I would, no, so, they but could make the government could act in your favor. I don't want subsidies for, I don't want solar uh, subsidies for green energy. So I don't want subsidies for fossil fuel mm -hmm. stuff. Anyway, there's, uh, I, I haven't looked into this, but mm -hmm. many uh, proponents of green energy say, well, the existing, the unclean fuel supplies get favorable uh, uh, preferential policy. I don't want any of that. I want it, I, I, I support green energy, but it has to win on its own in the marketplace, and when it does, that'll be great. I don't want, even though, you know, my dear friend Elon Musk, I don't want subsidies for his cars either. they got to compete in the marketplace. See, this is our fundamental difference. I think government should incentivize behavior no. that is in favor of the greater good. You want the nudge and the push. Yes. Don't, don't push Encouraging me. people down the right course. No, then I'm going to, then I'm going to do it, uh, then I'm going to not do it to be defiant and difficult. <laughs> We've got lots more coming up on Rising today. Stay tuned.